welcome to Food Handler Training. Thank you for being able to join us today. My name is Darrell Hammond and I'm the Chief of Environmental Health for the Irving Health Department. Today we're going to present a short training program that is geared towards you, the General Food Service employee. We plan to present many of the basic rules and principles that you should be familiar with before working in a food operation. As a food employee, you are the first line of defense against conditions, practices, and procedures that are set forth in the food code to protect the health and safety of the public. As you view this video, try to focus on what things are acceptable and which ones are not. At the end of each segment, I will summarize the main points for you to review. I believe that the most effective way to present this material is by actually viewing the interaction between a health inspector and the people in the facility that he is inspecting. So come on, let's get the camera and follow him. I think he should be arriving just about now. Hello, I'm Inspector Roy, here to do your regular city health inspection. Is the uh, manager here today? No, the manager's out sick today, and John and Harry are in the back, the other kitchen employee, and today's Harry's first day. Oh, okay, so I guess you're in charge. Uh, I guess so. All right, so what are you doing there? I am sanitized the probe, and now I'm checking the temperature of the fajita meat. Very good, 170 degrees. It needs to hold at 140 or hotter. That's very good. And I noticed you, when you did uh, sanitize your probe, you need to remember also to sanitize your uh, thermometer holder. Okay. Well, let's see here. Oh, I see a violation over here. The trash can for your customers needs to have a cover on it. Oh, okay, I'll let my boss know that. Do you have a copy of the last inspection report? Yes, it's on the office door. Okay, well, we'll get to that when we get back there. You must post your last health inspection report in the kitchen area so management employees can be reminded of the last inspection and what violations were marked. The main concern should be to correct everything that was noted and not have any repeat violations. I see you've got a drink there with a lid and a straw. That's, that's proper. Okay, yes, my boss said we could have one with a lid and a straw. Okay. The City of Irving allows you to have a beverage as long as it has a lid and a straw. We do not allow any bottles, cans, or coffee mugs, or any other type of open container. This is to minimize hand-mouth contamination. I notice you've got two rings on. We only allow one ring, one tight watch. Oh, my boss said I could have a ring on both hands. No, we only allow a ring on one hand. Oh, okay. An employee is allowed to wear one wedding ring and a tight-fitting watch on hands. Necklaces should be tucked into the shirt and no dangling earrings or bracelets are allowed. It is virtually impossible to properly wash hands with jewelry and eliminate all germs. Okay, let's see here. It looks like your um, uh, apron and your hair restraint is proper. Looks real nice. It's important to have your hair properly re restrained so that hair doesn't fall into food. A hair restraint is required unless the hair is worn in a style that is acceptable. Nothing in front of the ears or on the forehead. Okay, let's see here. Your uh, single service uh, fork, spoons, and knives, those need to be inverted so that your handle is up. Oh, okay. Your single service containers here are properly inverted. That's good. Okay. And your signs over here, looks like you have your food permit sign, your food manager certificate, your Heimlich maneuver poster, no smoking poster, and on your buffet line you have your please use a clean plate sign. That's very good. A current food establishment permit is required to be posted as well as the establishment's registered food manager's certificate. The Heimlich poster or choking poster is required to be posted and a please use a clean plate sign is required at the buffet line. Well, it looks like your lights are covered under your uh, serving line here. That's very good and your milk's iced down and I don't see any expired dates. That no, we, we check those every day to make sure there's no out of dates. That's very important, very good. Well, I'm ready to check the back room now. Okay. Thank you. Have your food permit, food manager certificate, and the choking sign posted in a clearly visible location. Wear clean clothes and be neat in appearance. Wear only one wedding ring, no other rings or bracelets. Have hair properly restrained or worn in a style that does not require a head cover. Drink only from an approved container, a lid and straw. Store all utensils for customer use, 
handles up. Store all takeout containers inverted. Have probe thermometer readily available and sanitized before each use. Make sure that cooked foods are at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit before placing on the steam table for hot holding. Ensure that all food products, such as milk, are not past their expiration date before use. Have covers on trash containers in customer areas. Harry, is that a cigar? You can't smoke back here. And your door's propped open. Your delivery man's long gone. It needs to stay shut to keep insects and rodents from coming in. And outside here, your grease barrel, it doesn't have the lid on tight. And your dumpster lids are open. That's a violation. All food must be from an approved source, which is from a licensed and inspected facility. Foods prepared at home may not be used in preparation or sold. Hello, John. Haven't seen you in a while. What are you doing well, there? Well, hello. Well, I'm just going through the milk. Uh, make sure that we pulled out all the outdated items. Uh, we wouldn't want to serve them. Uh, we, we separate them from the good product and because we get credit from the vendor. Okay, very good. You've got it marked. Any expired product cannot be used or sold if a food product is out of date. It'll be marked as a violation unless it's stored in a marked return bin. The same goes for molded, rotten produce. Our code says nothing can be used past its sell-by, use-by, or best-by date. What are you doing now? Oh, well, it's just basically the same principle. I'm pulling out the, the vegetables that are no longer any good, the, all the produce that's just not up to our quality standards here. Okay, very good. Any expired product cannot be used or sold if a food product is out of date. It'll be marked as a violation unless it is stored in the marked return bin. The same goes for molded, rotten produce. Our code says nothing can be used past its sell-by, use-by, or best-by date. Well, let's see. What do we got back here in the old walk-in? Oh, back here. This is a violation, John. You've got a raw chicken stored over produce. It's a violation to store raw chicken or other raw meats over other foods. Juice or blood containing bacteria may fall or drip on the food below, resulting in cross-contamination. We've got some cases on the floor, some watermelons on the floor that need to be up off the floor. Yes, sir. Well, the bucket's okay, isn't it? The bucket's okay because it has a proper cover. It's got tall sides, so it's uh, impervious to cross-contamination. So you can okay. still have the bucket down there. Okay, great. Now I'll move the boxes and the watermelon. Your foods here seem to be properly covered. That's good. I see dates on them, used by dates. Yes, That's sir. also very good. Um, let's see. I'm going to need to check if some temperatures in here on your uh, chicken. I need to sanitize my probe thermometer here so I don't cross-contaminate that chicken. Ah, very good. It's at least 38 degrees. Of course, you know you have to hold all uh, cold food at 41, so your cooler's working great. All potentially hazardous foods held in a cooler must maintain an internal temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. That's the product temperature, not the air temperature of the cooler. Probe thermometers should be used to check the internal temperature of any of the food in the cooler. Keep outside doors closed except when in use. Keep lids closed on outside dumpsters and grease containers. No smoking of any kind except in properly designated areas. Use only food from approved sources, no food from home. Segregate any expired products that must be kept for credit and clearly marked do not use. Do not store raw poultry, eggs, meat, or fish above other food products. Do not store food items on the floor. Keep all foods covered in storage. Do not leave products in cans that have been opened. Always maintain product temperature in cold holding units at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Oh, Harry, that's a major violation. You can't eat and drink in the kitchen. You've got to eat either in the office area or in the dining room. Employees may only eat and drink in designated break areas. Offices are in the dining room with the exception of a drink with a lid and a straw. Oh good, you're washing your hands. It's very important to wash hands after eating, drinking, smoking, using the restroom, before and after handling any food, between handling raw and ready-to-eat foods, 
after cleaning and after touching any part of your body. It's very important to use warm water and scrub with soap for at least 20 seconds and dry hands with a paper towel. Don't use a cloth and don't use an apron for drying hands. If an employee has a Band-Aid on their hands, they must wear a glove to protect the wound from contaminating the food. An area around and under the Band-Aid cannot be washed properly. Also, the Band-Aid doesn't come off in someone's food. If an employee doesn't have a Band-Aid on, they may want to use the hand sanitizer after they dry their hands instead of the gloves. An employee must either wear gloves or use the hand sanitizer after hand washing before handling ready to eat foods. Well, Harry, you just keep messing up here. You've got on dirty clothes. You just wiped your hand with your gloves. You need an apron on and you've got a cloth in your pocket. The cloth needs to stay in the sanitizer bucket between use. Depending on their illness, a sick employee may be put on restricted duty, such as non-food or utensil handling work, or they may have to be completely restricted from coming to work. Your supervisor will be the one to determine this but you must make him or her aware of your illness. No eating or drinking in food areas except drinks with lid and straw. Do not ever block access to hand wash sink. Always keep every hand wash sink supplied with soap and paper towels. Thorough hand washing is required when starting work shift, after going to the restroom, after handling raw food products, before handling clean utensils, after coughing, sneezing, touching hair or face, after eating, drinking, or smoking, after sweeping, mopping, or other cleaning, generally when hands are soiled. Band-Aids must be covered with gloves. Employees with certain illnesses must be excluded or restricted from handling of food or clean utensils. Harry, that's a violation to stack food directly on the floor. You know better than that. And this chicken here, it's a 64 degrees. It's in the danger zone. That should have been stored on ice. That's going to have to be destroyed. All potentially hazardous food must be kept out of the danger zone. 41 degrees to 140 degrees during storage, preparation, and holding. Because germs that cause foodborne illness grow in the danger zone and they multiply. So it's very important that potentially hazardous foods stay outside of that range or short periods in the danger zone or sometimes unavoidable, but must be kept to a minimum. Okay, let's see. Oh, Harry, here you're defrosting a frozen chicken. Should always be under running water when you defrost. Always keep it under running water. The proper way to defrost is under cold running water with drain open in the cooler or in the microwave if to be cooked immediately. Never leave out food on the counter or put in standing water. However, the best, best method is to plan ahead and thaw out under refrigeration. This is uh, sitting out to be prepped, but it has an expired date. You're going to have to destroy that. And over here I see you're stacking food without a cover should have a cover on this product before you stack another cover on it. And that can that you're opening is dented. You can't use it. You're going to have to destroy that. Harry, that's not a hand sink. That's a prep sink. You just washed your hands on top of your defrosting chicken and contaminated it. Only wash your hands in a hand sink. What are you doing there, John? Oh, I'm just setting out the chips for tonight's meal. Good. You've got gloves on. That's great. Yes, sir. Uh, we always make sure to wash our hands and don a fresh pair of gloves before we handle ready-to-eat foods. That's correct. Oh, I see you've got your bulk bins here all labeled. You've got tight lids. But what's this? Oh, you're using a styrofoam cup for a scoop. All scoops must be, have a handle, and then you need to keep the handle sticking straight up out of the product to prevent cross-contamination. Well, let's see how the dry storage room looks. Well, here's a violation right here. We have some single surface containers that aren't stored in a closed bag to protect them from dust and debris. Ah, and over here we have food stored in an open bag, which should be poured into a bulk bin with a lid and a label to prevent it from contamination. And we have foil on top of the scale. We don't allow foil to be used there. And here, Looks like some uh, salsa that says refrigerate after opening, and that should have been put in the cooler after it was opened. 
All products that say refrigerate after opening must be held in a cooler or on ice at 41 degrees or colder. If not, it'll have to be destroyed. Always read the labels and know your products. Where are you going with those? Oh, I'm taking them back to the refrigerator to make sure they stay good and cold before we Very set them good. out on the line tonight. Storm at 41, that's great. Cut melons are properly being placed in the cooler to keep it out of the danger zone. Once melons are cut, they become a potentially hazardous food and require refrigeration. What are you doing here? Well, I'm washing the lettuce for the salad. Um, again, we we got to make sure all the contaminations are gone as much of it as possible. You know, it comes out of it's a plant grown in the field. Mm, good. So we're just double checking, double washing. Keep food at proper temperature and out of the danger zone. Hot 140 degrees Fahrenheit or cold 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Thaw frozen foods in the cooler at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or less under cold running water in microwave then immediately cook. Do not use any food products past their expiration date. Do not stack unprotected foods on top of one another. Wash hands only in hand wash sink. Label all product containers. Do not leave products stored in open bags. Cover single service articles in storage. Read labels, refrigerate if necessary. Handle ready to eat foods properly. Do not use rotted or spoiled produce or products. Thoroughly wash all produce before using. Cindy, you know to wash your hands after touching the food, right? Yes. Very good. Harry, you just touched a raw chicken and then you handled lettuce. You're going to have to throw that lettuce away. It's been cross-contaminated. Not in that trash can. It doesn't have a liner. Harry, there's blood all over this lettuce. You've cross-contaminated it. That's going to have to be thrown away. Harry, that's a prep sink, not a wear washing uh, sink. That needs to be washed in a three compartment sink, not in a prep sink or not in a hand sink. Hand sinks are not for washing pans. Hand sinks are for hand washing only. Utensil sinks or dishwashers are for pans. Food prep sinks are for food only. Mop sinks are for mops and mop water only. Well, John, what are you doing oh, there? Right. What, what can you tell me about your hot holding food back there? We try to serve it, take it out to the line at 165 degrees. Uh, so we're just trying to keep it at least 140. Tell me about your cooking temperatures. Um, every, we just make it simple. We cook everything to 165 degrees. Okay. Okay. 165. Very good. Okay. Cold items, we try to keep all potentially hazardous foods at 41 degrees or colder, except of course when they're cooked. Okay, okay I'm getting 39 degrees now, so we've kept it on ice, so that should be good for it. Very good. Harry, you're using a trash can for a table. You can't do that. You're cross-contaminating your food prep service there. And John, over here you have some cardboard on the floor. We don't allow cardboard on the floor, only a rubber mat that can be properly sanitized. Okay, I did notice that earlier. I'll, I'll make sure it's gone. Okay, now. thank you. Is this your sanitizer bucket? That's good, 50 parts per million. Chlorine-based sanitizer must be 50 to 100 parts per million. Blue to purple is just right. Black is too strong. Keep wiping cloths stored in a sanitizer container between use in order to avoid spreading germs. 
change out the sanitizer water several times during the day. John, you have a foil on your backsplash of your oven. That's a violation. That's not a sanitizable surface. Okay. And also, your wooden spoon there, you can't, we don't allow wooden spoons because they can't be sanitized properly. Oh, all right. I'll get rid of it. Always wash hands after handling raw meats before going to another task. Avoid cross-contamination and storage by never storing raw meat products over other foods. Do not wash anything in hand wash sink except hands. Always maintain and check frequently hot and cold holding temperatures. Cook foods to the proper temperature. To be safe, cook all meats to an internal temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Have containers of sanitizer at proper concentration for wiping cloth storage at each workstation. Do not use cardboard as a cover on the floor. Do not store utensils on cloth. No foil on surfaces or to line pans. No tape on utensils and no wooden spoons. Do not use single service articles such as paper cups for scoops or food storage. Always keep product scoop handles out of the product. John, you just brought that out of the cooler in a mm -hmm. single service container. You can't store food in a single service container. Okay, I just okay. made it yesterday. Now you have to throw it out. Okay, uh, it's gone. And let's see, we've, you've got your food laid out here ready to use. You've got used by dates on here. They look good, mm -hmm. except, oh, this one's expired. How did so I miss that? That one will have to be thrown out. Okay. All the potentially hazardous foods laid out for use have been properly dated to show a seven-day use by date. It's important to date all prepared foods and to know when to discard. Hey, Harry, where are you going with those? Oh, going to refrigerate them? Well, we have a set procedure you've got to follow. We need to take the beans out of that deep pan, put them in shallow pans no more than four inches deep, spread them thin, put those pans in an ice bath, stir them until they get cool, then put them in the refrigerator. After that, uncovered. Okay? Go ahead and set them back on the stove for now. The proper way to chill foods is by using a four inch deep container or smaller. This allows the food to cool faster. You may also need to put the container in an ice bath to speed the cooling process. Always separate large pieces of food to facilitate the process. Hey Harry, what you doing now? Gonna put that out on the steam table? Well, it's not ready to put on the steam table yet. It's gotta be, notice you're holding it with bare hands. It's gotta be heated to 165 degrees before you can put it out there. So reheat it back on the stove or put it in the microwave till it's 165, or, or go ahead and <laughs> just put it back on the stove today. Um, we can never put the food out there on a steam table or on a, in a crock pot because they just heat the product too slowly. Okay? Do you have a stem thermometer? Uh, no, you don't. We'll, you should have a stem thermometer at all times. All leftovers must be reheated to 165 degrees before placing on the steam table or in a crock type holding pot. These types of units are only for holding and maintaining temperature at 140 degrees or higher, not for heating up. Heating to 165 degrees should be done rapidly on the stove top or in the microwave. All kitchen employees should have an available probe thermometer for frequently checking temperatures. Label and date all prepared PHFs that are held over for reuse. Do not use past that date. Use a quick cooling method to cool foods rapidly before placing into cold storage. Do not use a steam table or crock pot for rapid heating or reheating. Always reheat leftovers to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Harry, what are you doing in there without the light on? You can't be washing dishes without the light on. Well, let's see. You've got your dishwashing sink all set up wrong. You need to wash, rinse, and sanitize. Uh, do you have hot water in the rinse sink? Okay, what about a sanitizer? Do you have sanitizer? You don't have sanitizer. Do you have test strips? Here's your test strips right here. You need to have sanitizer in there, at least 100 parts per million for washing your dishes. Is that sanitizer? Oh yeah, I see you have it labeled properly. So we do this every day. That's it.
If not using an automatic dishwasher, the three-step process must be followed. Pre-scrape food off, then wash in hot soapy water in first sink, rinse in hot water thoroughly in the second sink, then sanitize by submersion for at least one minute in the third sink, then invert to air dry. Harry, you can't dry utensils or dishes with a cloth. They have to be air dried after sanitizing. You can't use your apron either. Oh, there you go again now. You've handled dirty dishes and then you should have washed your hands before handling clean dishes. Need to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with hot water in a hand sink before handling the clean dishes after handling the dirty ones. And over here, it looks like you've got a case of single service items on the floor under the sink. You've got to have those off the floor. And what's this over here? Food cases on the floor under the sink. Those have to be off the floor. Let's see, this is your chemical storage closet, but you have food in here stored with chemicals. Now that's a, a violation and that's a repeat from your last inspection. Clean and sanitize equipment in place that is not to be washed in a three bin sink or dishwasher. Properly use the three bin sink method of dishwashing at all times. Wash, rinse, sanitize, air dry. Always have sanitizer test strips available to check the concentration of sanitizer. Never dry utensils with a cloth, invert them and let air dry. Always wash hands between handling dirty and clean dishes. Keep lights working and turned on in all work areas. Do not store cleaners, sanitizers, or other chemicals with food items, utensils, or single service articles. Do not store food, utensils, or single service articles under sinks or other plumbing. Outside should have no high grass and weeds, potholes, standing water, or outside storage. The dumpster doors and lids should be kept shut. The grease barrel should have a lid on it at all times, and the ground should be clean. The front and back doors should have an auto closure, and the doors should be sealed. Look for signs of droppings or gnawed products, glue traps, Metal traps and snap traps should be put against the wall. The bait stations outside should be changed monthly. What's this? Oh, this is an over-the-counter pesticide. That's not allowed. Only commercial use pesticide. For insect control, only commercial use pesticides are allowed. Gel baits and dust work best for German roach infestations when they're applied in wall voids, cracks, and crevices. For flying insects, commercial use pyrethrin or resmethrin should be used. Light traps are allowed but not above food or food preparation surfaces. Keep the floor wall junctures clean and clear under all equipment. Each food establishment should have a contract with a commercial exterminator for regular service. Oh, Harry, I can't believe you did that can't ever pour mop water outside, you can got to pour it in the mop sink. And also your mop has to be stored with the handle down and the mop head up. Harry, I heard that toilet flush but I didn't hear the hand sink. Did you wash your hands? Got to wash your hands before you return to work after using the restroom. Got the employees must wash hand sign. Got towels, covered trash container, hot water, soap, toilet tissue, sanitary napkin bin with liner. Looks really good. The door doesn't have an automatic door closure. That is a violation. And out here I see we have a purse and a coat stored with the utensils. That is definitely a violation. The lights must be working and covered or have shatterproof bulbs. Trash cans must have liners and the trash cans in the customer area and women's restroom must have a lid. There should be no standing water or backed up drains. The floor should be maintained with no tiles missing or damaged. The walls should be maintained free of holes. 
The ceiling should be smooth and washable and all tiles should be present. If any employee notices any of these maintenance items, they should correct them or report them to their supervisor. Keep facility free from all insect and rodent activity. Outside grounds, keep all trash and debris cleaned up, grass and weeds cut. No outside storage. Store maintenance equipment properly. Properly dispose of mop and other wastewater. Keep restrooms clean and fully supplied with soap, paper towels, and toilet tissue. Must have covered waste container in restroom. Need employee hand washing sign in restroom. All exterior doors and restroom doors must be self-closing. Do not store personal articles such as clothes, purses, etc. with food, utensils, or single service articles. Maintain all walls, floors, ceilings clean and free of damage. All lights in kitchen or storage areas should have protective covers. I need to go over the results of y'all's inspection with you. Let's see here, you had three repeats, food stored in an open can, chemicals stored with food, plastic spoons and forks not protected in the supply room. So you have failed a day's inspection. I'll have to come back within two working days and reinspect. Uh, Harry, uh, he was just responsible for too many critical violations. In fact, Harry was responsible for at least five of the six critical violation categories that have proven to be the ones most associated with causing foodborne illnesses. And they are as follows. Holding temperatures of hot 140 degrees Fahrenheit and cold 41 degrees Fahrenheit must be maintained. Proper cooling down of cooked food, rapid reheating of foods to 165 degrees, cooking foods to proper internal temperature, prevention of cross-contamination in storage and preparation of food, practicing frequent and proper hand washing. There's our boss now. What's going on? John called me and said the health inspector was here. Yeah, we failed pretty bad thanks to Harry. Harry? Who's Harry? The new guy you hired that started today. I haven't hired any new guy. As Inspector Roy pointed out, the one employee that was not properly trained actually committed many violations, including several critical ones that could have contributed to making someone or even many people very sick. The purpose of the health inspection is to educate the workers and management of the establishment and help them to come into voluntary compliance by pointing out the things that they are doing or have done wrong. The inspector accomplishes this by marking and rating the facility as to how well they are following the rules. The purpose of a score or rating on the inspection is to allow you to see how good or bad you are doing. By making it an unannounced or a surprise inspection, it serves to keep you on your toes as you don't quite know when they may show up. You have to always be ready and following the rules. Your job is to correct the violations and make sure they do not reoccur. Unfortunately, there's generally a high turnover rate in the food industry and many employees come and go without proper training. It is very important that each of you play your part along with your supervisors to make sure that new employees are properly trained. Be sure and report violations to your supervisor and question them anytime you're unsure about a procedure. They all have had more intensive training in food safety and should be able to have all the answers for you about the food rules, including the more technical aspects such as cooking times, temperatures, and chemical concentrations, etc. But don't be afraid to question your health inspector when he comes through either. It's his job to teach you once again, we appreciate your joining us today. I hope you have learned something that you may not have known before.